this is a presentation of the Esprit Compact software. To start the software, we work from an icon on the desktop, double click, brings in the login environment. Each analyst can have their own login, and you can set level of expertise. So you have a basic, advanced, and a supervisor mode. Going full screen, this is the entire control of all the system. So we have three basic acquisition modes. Object mode, where we can collect the image and annotate it for spectral acquisition. Digital line profile and digital maps. On top here are your basic controls for setting default. So for your sample, you can set a prefix for the day. Put any distinguishing information about the sample. If you coded the sample, you can have it preset the coding analysis correction up as well. And that will be passed from sam sample to sample. We are in constant communication with the microscope. So every time we start an acquisition, we get the latest information from the microscope and save it with the data. Scan controls for the digital beam. We can collect images from 100 on up to 4096 pixel resolution. Any f size you wish. So it's not the old 128, 256, 512. If you want 392, you can have 392. We match aspect ratios to the microscope. We also have dual video input if the microscope has the ability of outputting simultaneously two signals. Otherwise, everything that's in channel one is, is what will be picked up. You have separate controls for pixel, line, and frame averaging for imaging and mapping. And you have a separate control for dwell, or pixel averaging, on line scans. EDS is the communication with the electronics. This sets your throughput. Now, typically, for most systems, there's only going to be one or two modes here. It depends on the electronics that you, you have. This divided into your energy range gives you your EV per channel. So we collect 4,000 channel spectrum at all times. So you can have 2.5, 5, 10, or 20 EV per channel. Mode turns the spectrometer on or off. So from room temperature, it takes 30 seconds typically to cool down our spectrometers. Our spectrometers usually run between minus 20 and minus 40 degrees Celsius, depending on which model you're using. All right. Now, system is for the communications of the hardware. This is where we go and set the defaults. The service engineer will come in here and set that for you. You can also customize your display, so how you want your KLMR markers displayed, what language you want to work with, how detailed markers you want. You can also come in here and set up your reports. So you can set these templates up to how you want your report to appear. So this is all user adjustable. You can put your own corporate logos, put as many default placements as you wish in here. Table is for the output for the things like quantitative analysis. All go out in an Excel style spreadsheet and can be saved directly. Chart is for the X-ray spectral display. Again, this is what defaults you want for KLM markers, you know, how detailed you want it, whether you want a background color or not. And then spectrum table, this is your default for quant. So what information do you want quant to come up with? Do you want just the atomic number? You, you don't want the atomic number. You want the symbol, elemental symbol, or name. You can uh, go for full concentration, atomic. You can have the stoichiometry or compounds. Uh, shown and then what error you wish. So this becomes the default. Whatever changes you make, press accept. That locks them in for you for the day. So now let's go over to object mode. Now in object mode, I can now collect the image. So I can simply say capture. So any place in the software where you see a down arrow key, that's your menu. So if I click on that, here's all the controls for capturing an image. So we can do a single frame, a continuous frame, and you can do sliding average. You can also activate automatic numbering if you wish. So right now with the continuous, I hit capture. There's my image coming in. And as you see, it's fast enough that I can focus, zoom, stigmate. If I want to make any adjustments, I can bring up the histogram display. So now I have a live histogram that I can either use the controls from the microscope to optimize the signal, or I can use control the signal through here as well. So I have contrast, brightness, gamma. I can even increase the frame average, line averaging by wish at this point. 
Clicking on capture again stops the frame since I was in continuous mode. Using the annotations down here now, I can come in and say, I want to collect a spectrum from this region here, from this region over here, from this polygon in here, from this ellipse in here, or a set of points. So I can just go in here and quickly click on a particular region or point that I'm interested in. So with that, I've set up five points. Call it the select all. Go to acquire. Here's all the conditions for which I can collect spectrum. So we can do it based on precision, basically one, two, three, sigma. So irregardless what the count rate is, it assures you you have minimum statistics. You can do it manually, which means keep collecting until I tell you to stop. Real time, live time, counts within the user defined region of the energy axis, and that region can be anything you want to set it up to be. You can add what we call an automated quantification or analysis. And what this will do is while it's collecting the spectrum, it can, or after, your choice, you can have it do an auto ID, quantification, just quant on a fixed list of elements, whatever you want your automatic numbering of the spectrum. This is your counter reset. You can also set where the final results are to go. So you can predetermine you want it to go to report, you want to save it to file, or you want uh, or file if you wish. And then you can specify a file on this. So with that now I hit acquire. Here's the first region. So it's already doing the identification. Down here it's doing the quant results. So with that, all my regions have been collected. I can take all this data now, and I can start writing my report. So if I want to put this into a report, I simply can come up here and say, Add to Report. And there's my first piece of data. So there's my image showing the annotations. There are the spectrum overlaid, and there's the quant results in an Excel spreadsheet. And as I add more information, it will append to the report the final output of this I can either direct it to Word or convert it to a PDF. At this point let's take a look at some of the, our other capabilities. So one of the things I'm going to do right now is select everything, reset the display. So I'm going to get rid of all my spectrum here and then Let's collect a new image. So let's do a capture. All right, let me just adjust my brightness contrast. And this time, let's take an overall spectrum. So I'm just going to take a look right now there. And I'm going to adjust my count rate down a little bit just for the time being. So right now, I'm about 20,000 counts a second. Let's collect the spectrum at this location. Let's pressing the right mouse button, I can turn on the auto scale. And let's adjust the display using the roller ball. I can pick up the spectrum and slew it around. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's save that as a new file. So that was done at 20,000 counts a second. So I'm just going to come in here and press the right mouse button, hit save. And I'm going to say 20K CPS. Let's increase my condenser lens so I can increase my count rate. So let's get it up to, all right, right now we're about 84,000 counts a second. Let's do another acquisition. All right, that looks very nice. So with that, let's save that data. So I'm going to come in here, hit save, and that was 84,000 counts a second. And just for the fun of it, let's increase the condenser lens a little bit more. Let's see if we can get it up to. So we're at about 167,000 counts a second. Let's do another acquisition. All right, so with that, let's save that result. So that's a 166K CPS. And let's call back our other spectrum. So again, I'm just going to press the right mouse button. 
and we're going to hit open. So we have the one at 20, and we have the one at 84,000 that we want to add right now. And let me change the colors, uh, switch them all to lines, choose a unique color for each one. So with that, I've got three spectrum overlaid. I'm going to scale them to a common background point. So one of the features we have is the ability of sc uh, scaling data under properties. This is where you can go to choose log, scale, square root, but also dynamic scaling. And then using the right mouse button, you can choose an area that you want to scale it to. And what we want to look at now are the three spectrum overlay. And the first thing we're going to look at is our iron peak. And notice that the position and the full width half max or resolution is exactly the same. The other thing to take a notice to is that the iron L to K is exactly the same among those three spectrum. Also, no sum or escape peaks will be seen. So we've gone from 17,000 counts a second past 160,000 counts a second. And we are not introducing any change in resolution, calibration, or efficiency. It's one of our favorite features of our system of how good our electronics and detectors are. And this is unique to us. We can maintain this and still maintain optimum detector resolution at all times throughout the system. One of the most common analysis that people want to do is quantitation. Now the system has been doing that on the fly. We can also be interactive with our quant data. So we can come through here and actually see exactly how quant has made that those choices for us. So what we're going to do is, let me zoom up on a different area of the sample. Okay. So I'm just going to move over a bit. What I want to do is look at one of these very, very bright regions. So I'm going to come up. Let's see if we can focus that up a little bit. Just my brightness contrast and all a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that looks better. And at this point, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to just put a spot right in the middle of that particle there. And we'll do another acquisition. So at this point, again, I have the automatic identifier on. And I'm going to just quickly turn that off for a second so we can go through its features and I'm going to switch this to manual mode so we can collect for a little longer. Alright, for identification purposes utilizing the periodic table tool we can simply click on any KLM marker at any time and notice on the silicon peak the formation, the little shoulder on the high energy side that's the formation of the silicon K beta and right now we're about 76,000 counts a second. You can also use finder, which means this is a computer assist. You point to the peak or using the right mouse button highlight the peak and it shows you what the possibilities are in that region. And then you can simply click on those markers to see which one fits the best. Obviously here calcium uh, works out the best for this particular analysis. You can also at any point in time pick up any marker and move it up and down an atomic number, basically following the rules of Mosley's law. So as we go up and down in energy f for a line series, you're going up and down an atomic number. At any point in time, you can also simply click on multiple markers. Bring them up onto the display if you know your energies. The ultimate is Auto ID. Auto ID has a down arrow. Notice as I point to things, I always get a brief description as to what they do. In Auto ID, I can set elements I know I'm never going to bother with, so to speed up the analysis, and I also can set minimum detection limits. So in other words, I'm telling it, you do the majors, I'll do the minors. So with that, we'll clear out our identification and let Auto ID have a crack at this. And Auto ID does a complete background subtraction. It checks for the relative intensities within the line series, and so it's looking for overlaps. So it's found a rare earth overlap over here and it's identified all my other peaks in this area and overall that looks rather nice. 
Now, basically what AutoID is really doing is a full quantitation. So I can use the same tools that Quant has. So when we do quantitation, we can either tell the system based on the KLM markers and the method I have. So right now I'm using a method called line markers plus peak to background CAF. So this, will, this is nice for rough surfaces. I hit quantify and the system will just simply look at my element list and run it through Quant and come up with a list. However, I can change this rotary here simply by clicking on it to a series of parallel lines. And in this mode, this becomes interactive. So I can use the same tools that AutoID is using to see my results. Basically, AutoID is doing a full quant. And right now, uh, if I hit quantify, it will just take my ID using the line markers and PBZF and give me the results. If I change this rotor to parallel lines simply by clicking on it, I go into an interactive mode. So now when I hit quantify, this panel appears. And now it's showing me the results of the exact analysis. So I can come in here and see the background fitting region windows plus the background it used itself and the results. But I can also go into an interactive mode. So in other words, looking over here, I can see exactly what the program did for each one of these analysis. So let's look at our rare earth overlap. So in brown is the background, in blue is the original spectrum. Magenta here is the calcium portion of that peak and the brown area over here is the iron peak. I can now tell the system show me lanthanum's contribution. So that's lanthanum's contribution by itself. Now show me cerium and neodymium. And if I hit decon, it shows me the sum of all that. And overall, that looks pretty good, except for this one region over here. And if I double-click on it, the system will come up in finder mode on the periodic table and says, look, praseodymium could be in there. As soon as I clicked on it, it added that to the list and redid the analysis. And notice now the peak is filled, and there's my portion of praseodymium. So the overlap in itself was praseodymium neodymium, cerium, and lanthanum. It has also updated my quant data. So now my results are uh, changed. And if I want to add more information or select more information, I can. This is the default mode right now. The other thing it did is it back calculated my mean sample density, which we see is about 3, t three uh, grams per cubic centimeter, and my x-ray depth and radius. So it's saying my depth of penetration is about 2 microns on the set of conditions I use with a radius of about 1.1 microns. So as I change my accelerating voltage, that too will change. So with that, if I'm satisfied, I simply hit OK, and it updates the analysis. And now I can add this to the report simply by saying add to report and show the report. So here's my results. Here's my original, my image my uh, spectra, and the quant data all together. So that's the second page into the report. The ultimate analysis most people would like to do is to map and show chemical distribution or change, or what we commonly call X-ray mapping, on the system. So again, utilizing the same area here, we're going to switch from object mode over to mapping mode. Now, in this, again, I can capture the area of, of interest. Collection is exactly the same as it was in object mode. The acquire mode for the map itself, I've got a couple of choices here. Again, I can keep it set to manual, which means keep collecting until I tell it to stop. I can do it for time or number of iterative passes. I also can do a subset of the original image, or I can tell I want to do the full area. When I'm done with these analysis, I can have it automatically save the results. You can also add uh, frame averaging into the, into the analysis. And any objects you use to extract spectrum can also be placed over here. You can also utilize the automatic numbering. So if you want to change this, you can do that as well for the image number and for the uh, objects on the system in itself. So with that, we're keeping it the same. This is a 640 by 480 pixel map. 
I'm going to up my count rate a little bit. Might as well take advantage of the ability of this detector. So I'm going to get it up to about, that looks good, 163,000 counts a second. All right, let me update my image. So I'm going to redo capture. All right. Let me look at my histogram quickly. Optimize my signal a little bit. That looks wonderful. So with that, I'm just going to hit Acquire. Now, I haven't told it what elements to process, so it's going to look at the pulse stream and come up with its own list of elements to initially start. This works in hypermap mode. So in other words, we're collecting every single x-ray within the field. So we can call up any element at any time now, either during the collection or post-acquisition. The nice thing about this, I don't have to stop the acquisition. Down here are my individual maps. This is my composite. So I can now turn off anything simply by clicking on the little checkbox. So if I want to just look at magnesium's distribution, there it is by itself. We can add calcium in there. We can also now put in silicon. All right, add in iron. So as I add into the elements, we see it also will add colors. So this blends colors as well. And then we can add the image in and see how it compares. You can also adjust contrast and gamma to optimize the color saturation and view of the, of the data. So if you want it more saturated. All right. We also have built-in online deconvolution. So if you have overlaps, the system will automatically background subtract and deconvolute the data for you on the fly. So with that, that looks pretty nice. Now, I want to investigate this a little bit more. So I can come in here and say, let's look at a spectrum from this area here versus this area here versus uh, this area here. So I've selected three regions. Clicking on spectrum, there they are. All right, let's bring the periodic table up. I'm going to turn the ROIs off so we just see the peaks. And what I'm also going to do is just look at the individual one. So this is region one we see is the silicon iron area. Region two, again, silicon iron, but now there's more iron and less silicon than the first region. If we overlay the two, that becomes rather obvious. All right, and then the third area, we have magnesium and silicon. So we've got a wide variety of differences here. Now, th while I'm doing this, I'm still collecting my data, I can now be totally interactive. So I can say, well, let's take a look at this area over here and see what, I'm, what's, what we find. And in this region here, we see we've got magnesium, silicon, calcium. That's good. Let's take a look at this area over here. And now we've got an entirely different spectrum. So in this area, again, we'll let Auto ID take a quick look. And we see that we got zirconium coming up, and we've got a little titanium peak. And as soon as I add those elements to the list, it adds it to the map series. So if we go back to map now, there are my individuals, so I can let's turn off the other ones but the new ones so I'm just going to simply click on them so here is zirconium's contribution in fact we turn off the image and magnesium so that's where zirconium is present also it overlays with titanium and turning on the background subtraction it'll take a pass or two and start suppressing the background for me as well and any overlaps that may exist. So they're not overlapped. They're, they are in the same area. They're not in two discrete different regions. All right. Let's start bringing back our other elements. I'm going to change the color of zirconium to a nice aqua so it makes it stand out. And the titanium will make a uh, magenta. Now we'll make it a uh, gray. Okay. And let's bring the image back in, do our composite. So let's uh, look at iron again. Uh, let's bring silicon so we can see exactly where things are happening. And finally, 
let's also bring up our calcium map. So let's click on calcium. It's there. That's magenta. Okay, that's already up. And again, I can change the relationship between these two maps. So I can make them one bigger or smaller. And we're doing this all while we're still collecting. The other thing we can do is we could look at a line profile. So I could come in here and say I want to select a line profile across that vector there. Hit line scan. There they are. And I can bring the map back over here. And now if I want I can click on that and using the plus minus keys I can integrate n number of lines on each side of that so to improve, help improve the statistics. And again this is all still live. We're still collecting data. In fact you just see it update right there. I do not have to stop the analysis to do any of these processings. All right, and there's my data coming in nicely. Once I'm satisfied with my results, I can stop the analysis. It'll finish the frame automatically. And now again, I can put this all into a report simply by saying add to report. So now I have on the first page here, I've got my original image showing all my annotations. I've got my composite map down here and then my individual maps here. And again, I can rescale this. So if I want them side by side, I can do that pretty quickly. And there are my maps. Any spectrum I have in here, I can simply bring up onto the display. So I can come in here and say, let's add those to the report, multiple spectrum. And now I can say show report. And there are each of the spectrum separately. And as we keep adding, again, it keeps appending the results. But the key thing with the hypermap collection that this system has, we're collecting all the elements within the spectrum. So if you misidentify an element, forget about an element, discover a new element. You don't have to restart the acquisition you can just simply go back and tell it, show me this possible element. It gives you the most flexibility that you can have within this type of system. Another popular analytical tool is to do digital line scans. Digital line scans many times have an advantage over maps because what it allows us to do is look at the change directly of the element along a vector. So going into line scans now, Again, you can set the size of the image you want. So let's update our acquisition. So I'm going to simply go to Capture. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, picking up the vector, I can adjust the position of this. So I can make it any angle, any area I want to cross, and number of sampling points. So earlier we saw that from our quant results, my x-ray spatial range was about 2 microns. So I can set this and the system says then you need 108 sampling points to do it end to end to end. Alright, in this case I'm going to actually up that to 120. So I have a little overlap between them. So it's going to be about uh, 1.8 microns. So there's a little bit of overlap going on in there. So I'm satisfied with that. I'm again your acquisition down arrow key here's all the modes automatic so you can use precision one two three sigma uh, manual you can use time and again your automatic numbering and default to where you want things to be saved so we're going to keep it a manual mode again I'm going to hit acquire now just like in hypermap I didn't tell it what elements to monitor so it looks at the pulse stream and comes up with a list of possibilities and again, you can adjust this at any time, just like in Hypermap. So we can add to the list uh, th throughout the analysis set. The other thing we can do here is I can analyze data. So for instance, I'd like to know more about this region here. So I can highlight it either on the zoomed up image or in the profile itself. Click on Spectrum. And now what you're looking at is that spectrum that I just extracted. So again, I'm going to go to the periodic table, turn the regions off. And I'll bring the profile over here. So if I want to see what the difference is from one region to another, so in this area here, we see it's magnesium, silicon, and iron. 
Let's look at it over here. So I can integrate an area, and here we see it's just silicon and iron. Uh, over here, it's mag and silicon. And down in here, again, mag and silicon, calcium, and we start seeing our rare earths coming up. And as you see, this is still live. We're still getting new data and new information. So I can highlight and integrate as large or small of a region anywhere along here and be able to see exactly what data I'm getting. And if I miss something, all right, like that aluminum peak there, I can simply come in here and say, well, let's add that to the list of possibilities. And immediately it updates the analysis. So now I have my individuals here and I have my composite here. And you can turn on or off, just like you could in mapping, any elements that you may not want overlaid at this point. Clicking on profiles, which is everything back. You can also change uh, things like the thickness of the line, if you wish, for your reports, or leave it as is. When you're finished with this type of analysis, these line profiles can be saved as an Excel file or a straight text file. All right, and group together automatically. More importantly, I can then also put this all into a report. So now I can come in here and say, all right, let's add this to the report. So I simply say add to report. And now I've got my image showing the vector uh, where we collected it from. And I can adjust that. And then I have my zoomed up image down here with the corresponding vector right on top of it. And that's now just been added my entire report. So now I've got a set eight page report and if I want I can then say well let's put that out to Word. So I can click on Word, click OK and that will automatically transfer all this data to a Word document if you have Word running on your system. Now obviously you need to have Word to do this. So there's my Word document showing all my data that I've transferred over. Also, we can uh, convert this to a PDF using free PDF simply by clicking on print and that will tr transfer the entire data into a PDF file, which is the way I usually send my reports out. You can still cut and paste out of a PDF, but it also gives you higher quality results typically. So we can come in here now, give it a location where I want to save the data. So I'm just going to put it into a temporary file right now and call it example PDF hit save so it's, it's transferring all the data over to the PDF and when we're done that's what we'll have so now I have my PDF file of all my results so that is the capability of the Esprit Compact we can do digital line profiles, complete profiles, just like hypermaps, where we can collect any element at any time, process it, uh, save it into an Excel file. You can do full maps. Again, maps are hypermaps. The beauty of the hypermap is we collect all the data in one single acquisition. So you can always go back, extract information at any point in time along here. You can uh, also add to the element list either during you can set up your elements before the analysis, during the analysis, or after the analysis. You do not have to stop acquisition to do so. And then object mode for an interactive mode where we can go through here and collect spectrum at various locations. At all times we can do full quantitation on any spectrum that we collect and have a full interactive mode where we can see all the deconvolution. That is the Esprit Compact software.